it wasn't, it, it didn't start out well. I, I always wanted to go in to entertain the troops, but when I got landing with CBS, they said, no, you're, you're a million dollar prop, you're not going anywhere. So when the troops came home, my show had got canceled. That's a whole other different story. I want but, to talk about that story. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> it's interesting. It's a great so, story. Uh, so I uh, I go to, to 29 Pounds Marine Base. We pull up in a limo. We blow anything up, down, and anything down, up. And I said, I'm going to like this place. So we go in, and George Lopez there, and George Miller, a couple of comics. Nice. So I go up to Jeff Altman, and he's the host. And I go to shake his hand, and he blows me out. He gives me a hi-hat, walks away, and I go, oh, you know, what's this? So they say, um, at, at, later in the show, they said, listen, Jeff, we have this kid who got a purple heart. He's back now, and we want to unite him with his mother. And he goes, that's kind of corny. And he walks off. I go, I'll do it. And so I go, hey, how you doing, uh, uh, Corporal? He's, well, you know, my, I miss my family. Well, that's great because we brought your mother in to be like, yay! The crowd goes crazy. And they said, uh, you want his job? I said, yeah, give me a dollar more than him. And I took over the Sunday comics that night. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, wow. and then, so then they said, <clears throat> we go from like 100 to 70 in the ratings. And they said, what do you want? I said, I want you to hire this kid, Kenny Rogers, and as my head writer. And they go, what's he written? I said, we well, wrote me a couple of letters from prison and one from the nun. <laughs> and they go, no, I'm serious. I go, you told me what I want. This is what I want. So they hire him. And they fly him out. I pick him up at the airport. And we drive to my place in Marina Del Rey. And he goes, which floor was yours? I go, all of them. You know, I was living in like a $3 million place at the time. And he goes, this is incredible. So we get jammed up for three days <laughs> coke and drinking and the third day he comes down he's all banged up he goes Lonnie he goes I love you man but he goes I got a wife and kid now I can't fuck this up I, I really need the job I said okay alright we'll go to work so we drive <laughs> we drive down to Fox and we put we kept my parking space at the top of the roof. It's great. And we're going by A Current Affair, which used to be Murray Povich's use. I yeah. said, you people suck. You shouldn't even have all these officers. And Kenny goes, what's right? I said, we're killing them in the ratings. They get all the... So we go down. And uh, I said to my secretary, hold all my calls. We go in my office and there's three couches. He said, why three couches? I said, when people come over, they might want to nap, right? So they said, okay, Mr. Clark, they're ready for Kenny. So I bring Kenny in to meet the producers. And I said, just come by the office when you're done. So 20 minutes later, he comes bursting into my office. You know, I can't believe it. You're the fucking boss. You know what they told me? My job is to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, he was great. Well, that show was a great show, but there was a crazy thing attached to that with your agent that wound up fucking over not just you, but a slew of people. Oh. One guy. Oh. Bob Williams. Bob Williams. What was the star agency? Is that what, it, what, what the fuck was the name? Spotlight. 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 Yeah. Oh, he fucked everybody. And a Jerry lot Seinfeld, too, yeah. right? Like but a Seinf million dollars. Yeah, but yep. I think Seinfeld, <laughs> and, well, when I popped, when I got Lenny, and I was making all sorts of money, they said... You need an agent. I said, I want Seinfeld and Leno's agent. You know, And at the same time, he was doing both of them. So I figured, these guys are the biggest guys in the business. And he screwed them, but they got their money back. I was like the the lowest guy on the totem pole. So I got, oh. I got screwed for like $2 million. Jesus yeah, Christ. I, I mean, and I, it, it was bad. I, I found, remember people were trying to keep you from killing uh, yeah, him. Yeah, I, I found out where his kids went to school and everything. You know, But you can't mm. do that. You, know, you got to let it go. So, yeah. yeah. But it took a long, long Whatever time. Whatever Is that guy still in the business? Country. Uh, uh, He's in country music. Oh, now. they didn't know. Yeah. yeah, they didn't get the memo. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh yeah, it was. I was. I was. I was so pissed. I mean, because not only did I, I, I have the show, but w when I went there, um, everything was going good, and uh, I invited um, Barry Diller to to. At Fox, he was the head of Fox at the time. I would throw a party for the entire cast, the crew, everyone at Fox, and it, they all showed up. And you know, I had, I showcased a bunch of my friends so they could get jobs. And uh, Barry Diller goes, "You've really done a great job for us." I said, "I really love you know working with you, Mr. Diller." He said, "Okay." So later in the night, this uh, this Asian man came up to me. He goes, "You know, everyone likes you, but I don't get it." And I said, well, stick around, Hop Singh. You'll catch you on. <laughs> and I didn't think anything of it. The next morning, I had just, they had given me like a million-dollar bonus, and they raised my uh, my weekly salary. I mean, it was a lot of money. It was like over $2 million bucks. And I was going to Dallas to do the te Texas State Fair with one of the Mandrell sisters, not, not uh, Earlene or the other one, just some crazy name. And I land in Dallas, and he calls me. He says, I got good news and bad news. I said, give me the bad news. He goes, did you have a problem with a Chinese guy last night? I said, no. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess. Well, that's Barry Dillis, right hand man. You're done. He's, they, you, they threw you off the lot. They said, I said, what's the good news? He said, we got your money. And I go, I, I, I want my job. I said, let me apologize to the guy. I, I didn't mean it. I didn't know. And they go, no, they've already taken all the stuff out of your office and put it in boxes. Wow. And, and you're, you're done. And now I do the state fair. And I'm going, man, this this sucks. You know, I mean, I want to get back to L.A. to try and salvage, you know, the career, you know, because, I mean, this is another <laughs> network that I'm no longer welcome at. Just uh, from one conversation. One co oh, I've, I've got stories. Of, I wish I'd never opened my mouth. I mean, I've, I've screwed up. <laughs> yeah, no one has, has fucked up my life more than myself. And uh, unintentional. You know? Right. So uh, we're, we're doing the state fair, and this horse with a buckboard, goes out of control and the horses swing and the buckboard's coming towards the reviewing stand so I grabbed him the Mandrell girl <laughs> and get her out of it just as the whole thing is wiped out and I'm saying did you get that did they get that on tape you know but that was uh, that was the end of my career at Fox that's now, crazy from one conversation where a guy said he didn't like you how about this how about when I'm I'm at I have Lenny at CBS, and it, it was doing good. And then, the, of course, the Gulf War came out. That, that, that killed me. And then they brought me back, and we were hanging on by a thread. And they said, listen, forget about the show. We think you're a great actor. Let's give you a, a movie deal. And I went, really? He says, yeah, we're going to give you the first picture, $2 million, and then the, the next picture would be, uh, uh, no, first a million, and then $2 million, and then $2 million, $5 million, three picture deal. I'm going, you know, I'm going, I can't believe this happened. Is that one question? Can you act? And I said, hey, I'm making believe I'm having fun with you, aren't I? Get out. I went, hey, man, I was only kidding. That was that was pretty good. Get out. And I and I go, I just cost myself $5 million. But just oh. by being funny, and, and, it, and I said, I'll never do that again. So... I read, I, 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 like that's going to happen, right? So, wait, Joe, it gets better. I read for this movie, True Romance, you know? Oh, yeah. Remember that movie? So, I mean, I get I get clean, I get straight, I, I work on the lines, I'm ready. So I go over, and it's Ridley Scott or his brother, one of the famous Scott directors, and a kid comes out, I say, how many people in there? And he goes, 13. I because I always like to know how many are in the room, because you don't want to go in there. So I walk in, and... Uh, and I look at the people. He goes, you ready? I go, yeah. I throw the script on the floor. He goes, I guess you are ready. He goes, hit it. Dimes was hitting from the left. I was hitting from the right. I said, you better like it because you're never going to lick pussy again. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. What does it say lick pussy? I said, write in the script. He picks it up and says, like pussy. I said, well, if you like it, you lick it, right? <laughs> Everyone in the room breaks all up. He goes, get out. Get out of my office. I said, that was quick. I get so I'm driving home. Oh. And my agent calls me and says, what did you do to Ridley Scott? I go, what? He, go, he said, you're a brilliant actor, but you got to get off the drugs. I said, I haven't done coke in two weeks. I was serious for this part. Who's he getting it to? Tom Sizemore and Chris Penn. <laughs> they get the job. No, there's no justice. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's the guys who were like yeah, yeah. up to their neck in coke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh my God! That's crazy that they got that upset. I'm having fun. I'm pretending I'm having well, fun with I, you. I, I make them believe I'm having fun with you. Honey. That's just all it took. Because I thought we were yeah, you know, having they, fun. They really in. They're giving you, offering you millions of dollars. I'm <sighs> thinking, oh, isn't this nice? You know, <clears throat> that's yeah. a problem with people that have so much power. They want you to suck their dick every second of the day. Mm. And as soon as there's any deviation at all, they think you're. Oh, you think you're a smart ass? You're done in this yeah. town. Well, you know how you know that how, like, kind of power, you, you know? You know, you know how guys sleep with women, you know, they get head. I had a woman told me she wanted to fuck me, but she was hideous. And it was at night in the morning. You know, I'm going, Jesus, I'm not even drunk. I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to back out of it. I'm going, no, no. <laughs> I didn't get that job either. Yeah.